Welcome, folks, to another Game Hoarder production. Some of you have been waiting a long time for this, and I've been waiting, I don't know, about a week to play it since Getter 7 7 turns me on to this awesome game created by the Czech Republic. And finally, after three years, translated into English for us English only speaking fuckers to play. It's Inquisitor! I start on medium. Now, I haven't totally decided. I don't want to be a paladin. I think I'll be a paladin. I'll just try to decide between paladin and priest. The paladin does get magic also. Let me take a look here. We'll take a look at all the uh, classes before we begin. Plus, you get other party members. So, I will have other spellcasters, I'm assuming. And apparently, you eventually learn all these spells. Although, if I'm a paladin, I'm going to make him a fighter. And I won't be in focusing on intelligence too much, obviously. We'll be going with the combat. Go ahead and pump up that strength. He makes him move faster and gives some defense. Dexterity is going to help with combat as well. I like that build there. We go ahead and do some divine magic, which will give us bless, endurance, solid faith, raise dead, healing touch, lightning protection, reflect wounds, divine mercy, holy ground. Trans substation, whatever the fuck that is. Frost protection, cure disease, purge protection, shield of faith, lightning. Archangel's power, divine wrath. That one sounds cooler. Now you notice I don't have a option for the inquisitorial, heretical, or pagan magic. These are the more evil offensive spells. But we might get access to them later. I'm not sure. Never played the game. There's nothing out there in English as far as walkthroughs or guides. So this is going to be a 100% blind LP. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the first ones in English going on YouTube. Seeing that it was just released today. Different portraits here. And then we have our skills, melee, ranged, armor use, perception, identification, shield use, sturdiness, holy protection, enemy estimation, divine strike, defense, smithing. Now you'll notice that the priest, he's got different melee skills, identification, flangelitism, authority, wisdom, alchemy, can do some potion mix mixing, mana, restoration, spiritual insight. Might do another play someday of this. Uh, it's just, uh, you don't really have alignment in this, as far as I know. Uh, and the intelligence isn't going to affect our dialogue, so it wouldn't quite be the same scope as doing the two Arcanum LPs that I did. Also, I'm going to be starting Baldur's Gate here in a couple weeks, so don't want to get too much on my plate. So you will notice that the priest does start out with one of the. Uh, I don't know, demonic magics, if you want to call them that. The thief, of course, gets the backstabbing, the stealth, the stealing. So if the thief's your thing, there you go. And he gets one of each. He gets a good magic and an evil magic. So probably pretty fun to play through is all of them. I want to make a kick-ass warrior. Paladin. Paladin's one of my favorite classes. I grew up playing Paladins in Dungeons and Dragons. They're pretty kick ass. I'm going to call my guy. 
I'm not going to be doing Lug Lug this time. We're going to be sticking with my classic Ronstock motif. I'm just going to call him Ronstock. Ronstock Longshanks, that is. Scruffy face, the clean face. I kind of like the scruffy guy. People will be punished for their sins. Satan will be released from his prison. And the omen in the sky will. The year 1223 has finally come. The whole kingdom of Utherest is drowning in chaos and the end of the world is getting nigh. In some it arouses hope, in others fear. But you are being preoccupied with the problem much more mundane. To stay alive. You have fallen into the hands of the Holy Office, which means only one thing these days. Torture and death. Of course, you could try to prove your innocence, but who would listen to reason these days? The scourges of God have stricken and there are hell spawns lurking high and low. But don't you dread. The Inquisition is here to restore peace and order. And each and every sinner shall be redeemed in the flames of divine justice. Even though he might seem innocent at that moment. God will be able to tell. Strangely enough, you are saved from the torture and the final judgment by two mysterious men who explain to the industrious servants of God, whose company you are enjoying, what a miscarriage of justice means. In the end, a pouch of gold turned out to be the best proof of innocence. The result of this seemingly simple transaction was one of the very few release orders ever issued by the Holy Inquisition. Nevertheless, as you soon found out, the price for the mercy was to be high. It looked quite innocent at first. You were to go to Hillebrandt, a mountain town in the northern border of the realm, and shed some light on the death of a certain merchant by the name of Kurth Olemier. Why you? Because you were nobody. You were insignificant and replaceable as your saviors had said, but what the hell, you were alive. So you set off for a journey to Hillebrand to find the inquisitorial judge, Valarian, whose errand boy you were supposed to become to hide your real mission, just as you were told to do. Your saviors promised to contact you soon to see the results of your investigation, and then you're supposed to be free. But everything was to turn out in a really, really different way. Why? Because it is the year 1223. The year when the world is to end. Alright folks, here we are. In the game world of Inquisitor. And Ronstock Longshanks is nearing this town of Hilbert. So 
let's go over some of the stuff here. We have our portrait over here showing positive negative effects. Our hit points being 70, stamina, and our mana. Right hand side, we have our quick inventory slots here in our inventory screen. We have our helmet, necklace, armor, shield, uh, belt, boots, gloves, rings. Tons of inventory there. We can also switch to our different weapons layouts. We have three different layouts we can equip. We have our journal. Goes over notes and proofs and a quest. We also have our book of magic. Apparently, I have none yet. Strike represents a conjunction of divine wrath and the strength of a paladin doll. Conjunction of the spiritual and physical sides of justice. A paladin using divine strike will boost his melee attack to a minute, or however cost him twice as much stamina. The higher mastery level the paladin has, the higher his chances to score a critical hit, which gives him the ability to stun his opponents. As you can see, you can drag these things over. I would think defense would be passive. Estimation of the enemy is a useful skill, which enables the opponent to discover strong and weak points of the opponent. So here you see we have tons of skills, which I'm going to go over in a bit. I want to show a bit more. Gameplay, as you can see, everything has tons of literature to it. This game, by the way, is going to have a lot of me doing voices. Uh, if that's not your cup of tea, you should probably fuck off now. Here's our inventory screen. Long stock, long shakes the night. And again, I have a paladin here. Oh, looks like we do have some kind of alignment here. Good and evil, we're right in the middle of neutral right now. Hover over to see all of them. And of course, our auto map. Halt! Who's there? Friend or foe? If I were foe, you'd be long dead by now. Hmm. So you're a friend, right? God, of course I'm a friend. Hmm. Anyone could say that. If you're a friend, show us your goodwill. I will show you good by letting you live. Do you know who I am? Open the gate immediately. Uh, all right, as you wish. Can I at least ask, what is your business in here, Brunt? I am looking for Bishop Valerian. Can you tell me where I can find him? You're looking for Bishop Valerian, the local inquisitorial judge? What could the paladin of the Brotherhood of Righteous want from Chief Inquisitor? I thought that the Brotherhood of Righteous didn't particularly cherish the Inquisition. That's none of your business, short soldier. Damn! Well, you're probably right. No offense intended. You'll find Bishop Valerian in the church. Can't miss it. We have only one in Hilbrunt. Thank you, good man. You're welcome. I suppose you're interested in the murder of the merchant Kurt Olimir, right? It was quite an awful murder. You can believe me that. His throat was slit, as if he was a sheep in a slaughterhouse. What do you know about the murder? Can you tell me some details? I'm sorry, Knight. I don't know much about it. I was off duty that day. I didn't know Kurt Olmir personally. He was a weirdo and also an adventurer. He used to be wandering outside town all the time, trying to ask somebody in town. But the murder was really awful. Guys told me after Truthorn found him in his room with a slit throat, he was vomiting all day long, and that's something. Can you tell me a little bit more about your town? It's my first time here. Well, you want to know something about Hilbrunt? All right, I'll be honest. It's a backwater dump bordering on wilderness. We're not... If it weren't for the iron ore they found some hundred years back, they'd never have made Hillbrunt a town. On the other hand, it used to be quite calm here. Well, occasionally a monster came down from the Moonshine Mountains. And now? No offense, Knight, but it's damn shitty now. Monsters of all kinds are swarming just behind the town walls since that damn star of doom appeared. The 
town's been going to hell. Famine, plague, ring, and fire, you name it. See that the world doesn't look like that. You tell me what it is. Well? The worst disaster came this year, though. Everything was held in by the terrible storm. Till then, no monster had tried to attack the town. But everything changed after the storm. Dead left the graves. Mines got flooded by orcs. The moonshine mountains are swarming with half-ogres and trolls. Giant bats are circling the town at night. There's too goddamn many of them. Too many! Well, I don't have to tell you. Paladins such as you know more things about it like that. So, welcome to Hill Run. Thank you, soldier. Farewell. I'm going to look around a little bit first. Uh-oh. We have a bat. Ooh, gotcha, bat. Made that bat, my bitch. So I'm probably going to render this first video and get it uploaded, just so you guys know I am working on it after that. I'm going to probably just play a few more hours, and then I'll be doing the remaining rendering. Oh, looks like I went to the edge of the map there. I'll be doing the remaining rendering and uploading tomorrow for what I do tonight. Uh, this game is being played in high def at a 1920 by 1080 resolution, so yeah, we're talking about 100 plus gigs every 30 minutes I record on fraps, which needs to be shrunken down. Let's slaughter some more giant bats and my are they big. They don't seem to be doing too much damage to Ronstock Longshanks. Unfortunately, I will be with the female this weekend. Well, fortunately and unfortunately for you, because I won't be uh, able to upload very many videos of this. I'll be doing a couple every every day of the week next week. Uh oh, triple bat attack. Yeah, not too good on outrunning monsters. What's going on here? Besides, I'm getting pwned by some bats. I don't know about this combat. This is a little finicky. I suppose I don't have a healing spell yet, do I? <laughs> Just got my ass raped. Let's see, bless. Anything done in the name of God is done with God's blessing. Therefore, everything that must be done in the name of the Savior must necessarily be worth blessing. This idea contributed to the creation of the Blessed Spell, which helps the faithful by increasing their ability to cast spells using the spiritual influence of their current metaphysical fundamentals of faith. Temporarily, of course. Plus two on bonus to attack. The penetration of spell cast. Any being can be targeted with a spell. The duration of the spell increases with the master level. The caster. Probably should have cast that before I got attacked by three bats at the same time. Oh, 
not sure if there's a button that picks up everything, but I kind of like clicking on all these tiny little icons. The Hasmodar seal can be used to cast fireballs, which can seriously hurt its target. Hasmodar is a seal bearing the crest of a pagan fire demon of the same name. He became known for woe, falling in love with the goddess of water named Shawnee, and for incinerating all of her suitors with fireballs. In the end, Shawnee had no other option than to marry him, which actually killed the demon. Seals in general are items consecrated to angels, demons, or an ancient mystical beings. They are able to channel magic energy and transform it into deadly bolts of fire, ice, or light. The principles of operation of seals are similar to those of spells with one major difference. Seals are independent of the user's intelligence and of the knowledge of magic tones. They drain the user's mana every time they're used to cast a spell. The target is hit when he's in the trajectory of the projectile. The target's armor is of no use when it comes to the protection against such a projectile of magic energy. Based on the quality, there are four levels of seals. A symbol, a seal, a pentacle, and a sigillum. The more powerful the seal is, the more powerful is the spell it can cast. Alright, so we have the first level, which is a symbol. We'll put that up there as well. Potion of Perception. A perfect potion of strength. Temporarily increases my strength. We can also break items or destroy them here. Which from what I read will come into play when we're doing certain quests. There will be items that we need to destroy as part of the quest. priest for a little bit just to see what it's like that sucks I can't take the big awesome shield you see the double feet icon that you see there that means that it's going to take you to the exterior map. We're just kind of going around, searching around the town right now, getting a feel for the game. And we leveled. So, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Four tribute points, four skill points. Gonna make them sick in strength. Uh, melee combat. That's what we're doing. Get range combat. Armor use, of course, uh, helps out. Lessons be a chance. Gives you better protection. Identification. Identifying items. Perception. Shield use. Sturdiness. Holy protection. Enemy estimation, of course, divine strike, defense, and smithing. And our magic's divine and magic of miracles as well. I always like to pump early points into strength just to make the early combat easier until you get better weapons and armor. Run! And you can see we have the padded armor on our character now, it does show. Apparently, every little piece of armor shows up loud and clear on your character. Now we're doing some damage. Bring it, vampire bot. I shall slay thee. That's right, get some. You want some, you can get some. I'll give it to you. I'll give you something to suck on, vampy. Oh. Oh, I'm all out of 
stamina. That's why I'm attacking so much slower now. It's another thing you gotta watch. So I guess what we're gonna want to do is put our stamina potions, health potions, and mana potions. Now you'll notice each of the mana potions have different rings around them for their their intensity. That's pretty cool. I like that. So a real weak mana potion has no rings. That's a bad potion. But a really good potion, a miraculous potion, is filled with rings around the edges of the potion. Very cool. So far, I am digging this game. Yeah, batty, batty. Also pretty cool that they don't just litter the uh, game with music. You get to hear all the nice supple sound effects. I've noticed that the trees are slightly swaying to and fro. It's a nice little effect. Obviously the graphics aren't state of the art, but honestly to me these are state of the art graphics for this type of game. If you're anyone that knows anything about RPGs, it ain't got shit to do with the graphics. That's the last fucking thing on my mind when I'm thinking about a good RPG. If RPGs were based on good graphics, I wouldn't be playing 8-bit Might and Magic right now. See the numbers there on our quick items you can actually hit say nine and he'll use one of the potions there the problem is i don't want him to use my best potions i want him to use my shitty potions you can also double click on the item that will use it as well here we have some more items We found a helmet. We also have some arrows that need identification. And my skill's not high enough to even identify the short sword that I'm carrying. Looks like we're on the northern edge of the town. I guess this is where speed comes into play. Time to use it right after you kill the enemy. I'm learning, folks. I'm learning. Got another level here as well. <laughs> All right, let's pump that up to 25. Let's add some more. Stamina, so we can attack longer. Fuck it, knocks out that melee. I've learned in a lot of these games, you definitely don't want to spread yourself out too thin and learn too much. 
winds up biting me in the ass in the end. The bats are in trouble now. Keep your eye on your quick keys, gotta keep your eye on your health, mana, stamina. It's gonna take a couple of videos for me to get used to it. So it's good they're only starting me out with little pesky bats. Oh, what do we have here? Campfire. Hmm, it seems that someone I have revealed someone's hideout. However, who would hide in the wilderness full of dangerous monsters? I don't know, it's a good question. Anyway, there's no one in sight. Perhaps I should come back later. I'm thinking perhaps we should save our game. And take this stuff! Range weapons, some throwing axes. There must be a quick way to change in between weapons as well, which I'll need to figure that out. folks so I think that about wraps it up here gonna go ahead and render this uh oh yep, we must kill all vampire bats I'm digging it with the palette and I'll still be able to get some spells maybe not massive range death spells but that's okay because I want to be able to wear the big badass armor and wield the big badass weapons Next video, we're going to be in town, and I'm assuming it's going to take a few videos to go through all the dialogue. So again, if ultra amounts of dialogue aren't your cup of tea, you might want to stick to my Might and Magic videos or Fallout Tactics. Even when I start Baldur's Gate, there's a lot of dialogue in that as well, although I think this is a lot more. Alright folks, and I want to thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the Inquisitor play here that we've started. Stay tuned for some more Inquisitor soon to come.